Cooper, you have a J45. Oh, yeah. And I have a J45 inspired by that J45. Let's compare, shall we? Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to head to the link below and become an Alamo Music Insider. So Cooper, we've got J45s coming out the wazoo from Kalamazoo, but they're not made there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is the J45 comparison to end J45 comparisons until the next time we do a J45 comparison. But we are looking at three different guitars today mm -hmm. that are all J45. So you have? I have the 50s J45 in ebony. In ebony. Pretty cool. Black by any other name. Um, I have a J45 by Epiphone. This is the inspired by Gibson J45 EC, which got a bite taken out of it. And then that one is? It's the standard. It's the standard. Yes, yeah, so this is the Gibson J45. Not to be confused with this Gibson J45, because this Gibson J45 is not from the 50s, and neither one is this, but this one's kind of like the one that came from the 50s, but it has a pickup in it that they didn't have in the 50s. And then this one is part of the modern line that says J45 with the new tuners. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. So, yeah, so we have three. And, you know, initially we were just going to compare these. And I decided, you know what, let's talk about what's going on with J45s and the lineup again. Because sometimes people, you know, may miss those headlines or what's really going on. And they get a chance to compare this guy. So we've already compared the Hummingbird. And if you aren't aware, Epiphone is really, I think, having a bit of a revamp and renaissance. There's made in the USA models, they still have their master built stuff, and they're doing this whole live of inspired by Gibson. And the best part of all of that is they can now make an, a J45 guitar that they don't call something else, even though everybody knows it's supposed to be like a J45. Yeah, what, right? what was the previous? This? It was like AJ45. AJ, I'm yeah. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. whatever. <laughs> so, acoustic J45? I don't know. As opposed As to... As opposed to the, just the J45. The classic, yeah, solid body J45. Which is different from an SJ200, and they did a version of that. So we did the Hummingbird. If you yeah. haven't seen that video, head up there and you can see our thoughts on that. Um, but this is a Epiphone J45. Now this is the EC version. It's electric cutaway. There is a non-EC version, which is still electric. That's not in the name, but it doesn't have a cutaway, which is in this name. Anyway, um, and there's a bunch of differences between them. The biggest one is probably price. Price. <laughs> price yeah. is the biggest difference. Country of origin um, and little bits of specs here and there. So let's talk about these two and get that elephant out of the room first. So in the USA line, there's a few different J45 options, but these are the two biggest distinctions. Um, there is the modern series of acoustics, and in that lineup, you have a J45 standard. And this is your modern J45, which is not that modern, but it does have modern Grover tuners, has an LR Bags VTC pickup system, and the rest is very much the same. It's still a nitrocellulose lacquer finish. It has a different style nut, on it um, and saddle, this bracing is the same. Um, I'm trying to think, the, the, the thickness of the neck, the nut width, the radius, all of that's pretty much the same. Um, it's got a teardrop. Yeah, the pick guard is different. Um, I'll give you that one. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. And then you have the 50s version. So the 50s version has the same pickup system which they didn't have in the 50s, but we all need to plug in our guitars nowadays, so that's yeah, okay. Yeah, apparently. Um, and it comes in either this ebony finish or the classic sunburst. Um, and the nut's different, the tuners are different. Uh, the tuners are more like the tuners over here. They're those classic strap button style tuners. Um, the neck shape's a little different, but not by much. It's not like the southern jumbo difference. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I said, the nut width and the, the radius and the scale length are all the same, which is not the case over here. This is a J45, and whether you get this EC version or the non-EC version, it has a weird nut width and a weird scale length, which is just the slightest bit shorter or narrower than those two. And all I can figure is it's something to do with the tooling, or they just want it to be slightly different from the Gibson versions. That was the case with the Hummingbird too, right? That's yeah, 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 that's what we thought with the Hummingbird, is it's, it's different to be different, or yeah. it's tooling. 
That's all I can come up with. Uh, the neck shape's a little shallower on this, and you've this is clearly kind of aping the the fifties because you got you got the tuners. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you got those classic tuners. You've got the open book Kalamazoo style headstock that Epiphone has gone to. And whether you get this or uh, the non-EC version, you get a Fishman pickup system. And the other one, it's sound hole mounted Sonitone. Uh, so this controls are right here and it's a Sonitone pickup. This is a Presys 2, which I think is the same pickup element with an onboard preamp with a built-in tuner. Um, so that's what you're looking at. The uh, fretboard or, and the bridge are Indian Laurel, which is like Rosewood Light. <laughs> It's, it's very much like East Indian Rosewood without being East Indian Rosewood, so I guess it's less expensive. But, you know, like the Hummingbird that we reviewed, the biggest thing for me is I really like the finish on it. It's nice. It's like not, not gloss, not it's satin. Like that it's that knocked down yeah. semi-gloss. It's cool. It's really nice look, and it harkens to that old-school aesthetic. Um, now, both of these Gibson ones, Spruce Mahogany. Mm-hmm. Spruce, spruce solid mahogany. spruce top. Yep, all solid. All solid. Yeah, so big value. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this is, these are hand scalloped, braced guitars. And Gibson guitars built in Bozeman are pretty much, for the most part, handmade guitars. You know, this is decidedly not. And they're very mum about bracing, but it is scalloped decks bracing. Um, so playing the guitars, I can tell you my takeaway is much like we saw with the Hummingbird. This guitar sounds great particularly for the money, it's not quite as light. Look, you've been holding that one. Yeah. That's a little heavy. It's a little heavier. Um, so it's not quite as light. It's not quite as resonant. Um, but it's also not quite as expensive. It's, you know, under $1,000. Um, a good bit under $1,000, actually, for that guitar versus, yeah. you know, one of these Gibson J45s. It, it looks really nice, and I think it's like a step up. For, I mean, the Masterbuilt stuff has always looked pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, but this and the Hummingbird, both, like, they look really quality. Which they I look like. the part. Yeah. They play well. Mm -hmm. They sound they sound good. Yeah. They sound really good. Um, you know, the, we noticed with the Hummingbird, remember, the pick, the pick guard had, like, different yeah. kind of artwork, different coloring. There's little, little differences. Little this is like a bubble. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's got this weird kind of tapering to the molded aspect of the pick guard. It's definitely thicker. Yeah. The, the uh, bridge seems slightly different. Um, but yeah, all of the, the classic hallmarks are there. Yeah. So you can tell it was not built in Bozeman and it doesn't say Gibson on the headstock, but you'd have to really know. Like if someone went like that and you were playing on stage, you'd have to really know. Yeah. So, um, you know, but how's it compare? I still think a classic J45 is great and uh, it's tough, but there's it's probably 85% of the way there, um, you know, from a... J45 Ebony Sunburst or J50. You know, we, did, we talked recently in a video about J50s and J45 by another name. If you haven't seen that, click that link and you'll see what we're talking about. Maybe they'll do a J50 uh, inspired by Gibson. Do you think? We'll see. I doubt it. I doubt it too. Yeah. <laughs> they'll just do... They'll do a songwriter <laughs> burst before they do a No, you know do what they'll J50. do? Because it's Epiphone. They won't do a J50. They'll just do a J45 natural. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so, no communication between No communication two. whatsoever. Yeah. So I'm going to run these through their paces so you can hear for yourself. Now, we're, we're playing these acoustically as we typically do, but we've also plugged these in. Uh, the two J45s have the same pickup, but the... Epiphone is different, so you'll be able to hear not just the differences in the sound acoustically, but plugged in as well. Check it out.
So there you have it, a comparison between these three J45s. Now you're holding the standard now. We've put the black guitar away. Black guitars, we're saying, most beautiful guitars until you touch them. Um, but if you rock it, more power to you. Um, or ebony, as they're calling it. So, you know, I'm a big fan of J45s. I really like them a lot. I like overall what's happening at Epiphone. I like the inspired by Gibson stuff. What's your take on it? I really like it. I was impressed with the Hummingbird, and I'm impressed with that one as well. I don't love the cutaway. Yeah, uh, just, you'd go with the just J45. I'd just go with that, but I do think it's cool. I mean, the, it's an option. Um, now I'm giving myself away. Do they? Does Gibson make a cutaway J45? Yeah, in yeah. Their production it's on the now? modern line. Um, they've had a few different ones, and um, I'll just go out and just be honest. None of them sell very well. I personally think it's kind of a weird aesthetic. Yeah. It seems to actually work. I think the cutaway is a little different shape on this, but the slope shoulder dreadnought with a cutaway is always kind of... It's a little wrong it's, to me. Yeah, there's something off about it compared to... well, any. And I'll be honest, I don't think any dreadnought with a cutaway is my favorite. No, there's something definitely about the not. It's almost to me like a, I've been conditioned to think Taylor's all look amazing with the cutaway and every other acoustic manufacturer I'm good without. I think it comes um, down to the lines of the guitar. Yeah. And so, some guitars, the lines kind of lend themselves to having that and it working from an aesthetic standpoint. And other times it just seems like, yeah, it doesn't work with the rest of the guitar yeah. as, as far as it looks. But sometimes you have to have it. Yeah, you gotta have it. I doubt that the J45 guy playing cowboy chords needs it, but whatever. I, that's a personal well, up here, opinion of mine. You need it if you're in the higher register. Yeah. But if you're in the cash register, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, for me, I really like Gibson's original line. Mm -hmm. And I like that the inspired by stuff takes cues from the original line. Yep. This seems, like you said, this is the most modern set of tuners I've ever se seen on an original. You know, J45. you know what's funny about that is before they did the original modern, this was just the J45. The J45. Unless you went custom shop, this was the J45. It's a and still is. Yeah, it's just a J45. I like it. Some of the other modern stuff, like the songwriter and all that, it's obviously a little more modern, modern. But you know where I really liked those tuners hmm. while I was tuning up these guitars. Yeah, I'll just yeah, you know, I'll just put it out there. I really liked the, aesthetically. Yeah, I kind of like these. And I was, I was telling Josh behind the camera right now, and he said I should bring this up. You know, the, uh, the tuners actually on that J50 felt great. They're, I've played a bunch of guitars. I've tuned up a bunch of guitars today. And those strap button style white plastic button tuners were probably the best feeling tuners of any of the guitars I've tuned up today. That being said, this style of tuner makes me so nervous because these are held on with a screw. Yeah. And these are plastic, and they're not. And if they break, you're done. You just have to replace the tuner. If they break, you're playing out of tune for the rest of that show. No, if you if you break, you're like Tom Waits with like a, a you know wrench there, you know tuning it up. That's a cool aesthetic, though. I mean, I <laughs> just like leave that. a vice grip. Stick. Yeah, that's <laughs> rock and roll. That's rock and roll, baby. But so, no, I mean, inspired by Gibson stuff has all been really cool so far. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I think the whole line is great. I think uh, it's a huge improvement over what they had before. That was kind of sort of, but not really, you yeah. know, inspired by. And uh, not just that they're calling it a J45, but the aesthetic and the feel and the sound and everything's improved all these guitars. And the value, it's, it's a huge value. Mm -hmm. I mean, the price is, is fantastic. You don't get a case with them. Um, so you probably noticed in the demo that uh, we had cases, except on this one where we had the box, because that's what you get. If, if you don't buy a case, it comes with a box. So, but that's okay. It's still a great guitar. I mean, if you've got the vice grip on there, you might as well carry it to the gig in a box. <laughs> or just strap it on your back. You yeah, know? that's cool. From the vice grip to the you know, end pin and, and off you go. There you go. So let us know below what you think of the demos. Not just, by the way, the Epiphone uh, Gibson, inspired by Gibson line, but also the other two J45s. What would be your pick? Which aesthetic and sound and style do you think uh, best represents kind of what the J45 is and how good of a value do you think this is? Because I think it's a huge value. 
right? Yep. Yep, cool. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos so that other guitar players discover us and we can get to that 100,000 mark, which you've been helping us to do. And look at becoming an Alamo Music Insider. We'll hang out some more. We'll see you next time. Thank you.